Are you feeling nervous about an upcoming incident response interview? Well, you're not alone. Stick around and hear from our experts how you can prepare for your interview and some common interview questions that you might hear. Before you ever make it to the interview room, you're going to want to prepare. Coming prepared will not only boost your confidence, but also give you a home team advantage for any curveball questions that the interviewer might throw your way. Let's go through some of the preparation steps to get you ready for your interview. First off for preparation, you're going to want to fully understand the role that you are applying for. Is this incident responder role for a managed service provider? where you may be supporting different companies across different industries and infrastructure? Or is this incident responder role for an internal SOC, where you will only be working with one company? How large is the team? Will you be managing people or is your primary role going to be incident response? Do some research on the company itself. If you happen to know somebody or somebody knows somebody that works at the company, you can ask them. But if you don't have that resource, you can always do open source research. You can look on LinkedIn or Glassdoor to see what other people's experiences have been. What are some of the challenges and successes that people have experienced at the company that you're applying for? Research the salary range of the role you are applying for. You can look at similar job postings on LinkedIn or even ask a relevant Reddit community. Our experts do not recommend that you divulge your salary expectations in the interview. Instead, you could respond with something like, I believe my salary expectations are within your range. If things go well, I will be open to your suggestions at the proposal stage. And now you've done some really great prep, let's get to some common interview questions that you might hear when applying for an incident responder role and ideas on how to answer them. Here are some general questions that you might hear during an incident response interview. What is an incident? In general, an incident is a violation of computer security policies, acceptable use policies, or standard computer security practices. Let's go over some samples. An attacker commands a botnet to send a high volume of connection requests to one of the organization's web servers, causing a crash and denial of service. An attack like this could greatly affect a business's ability to operate. Another example is users are tricked into opening an emailed quarterly report from their company. Unfortunately, this quarterly report contains malware, and now that the user has clicked on it, there is a tool running on their computer, which establishes connections to a malicious external host. This can be troublesome because now the attacker potentially has a foothold in your internal network. Question number two, can you explain the incident response lifecycle and its key phases? The NIST incident response lifecycle breaks the incident response lifecycle down into four different phases. First is preparation, detection and analysis of the incident, containment, eradication, and recovery. And finally, post-incident analysis. Cybersecurity is a field which is greatly focused on policy and frameworks. So referencing an industry standard framework like NIST can help an employer feel confident about your capabilities. Question number three, what are some common sources of incident alerts, intrusion detection systems, security information and event monitoring solutions, firewalls, antivirus, and user reports. Interview question number four, what are some common indicators of a security incident? Common indicators include unusual network traffic patterns, unauthorized access attempts, unexpected system behavior, and of course, malware infections. Interview question number five, define the term indicators of compromise and explain how they are used in incident response. Indicators of compromise are artifacts or behaviors that indicate the presence of a security incident or compromise. These can include IP addresses, domain names, file hashes, registry keys, and network traffic patterns. These are used to detect, investigate, and remediate security incidents. Next up, number six, explain the difference between proactive and reactive incident response strategies. Proactive incident response involves implementing preventive measures and proactive monitoring to identify and mitigate risks before they're escalated into an incident. Reactive incident response is responding to an incident after it's happened. These steps include detection analysis, containment, eradication, and recovery steps. Question number seven, what is root cause analysis? Root cause analysis, sometimes referred to as RCA, is the formal effort to identify and document the root cause of an incident, and then take preventative measures to ensure that the same problem does not happen again. All right guys, those are some of the basic questions that you might run into in an incident response interview, and I wanna get into some of the more technical ones. However, first, let's talk a little bit more about posturing yourself for success. In addition to mastering interview questions, it's essential to have the right tools and resources to stay ahead in the world of cybersecurity and incident response. That's why I'm excited to share with you a platform that has been a game changer for incident responders worldwide. As I'm sure you know, effective incident response requires continuous learning and development. And that is where Let's Defend comes in. Let's Defend is a really cool interactive online training program that will help you level up your career in cybersecurity. With its interactive modules, real life simulations, and expert developed courses, you can share these successes with your online community, 
or even potential hiring managers. They even have free modules to get you started. Imagine having access to a platform that not only prepares you for interviews, but also enhances your skills and expertise as an incident responder. Well, that is exactly what Let's Defend offers. All right, guys, now that you have that resource, let's go ahead and get back to some of the more advanced interview questions that you might run into during an incident response interview. What tools would you commonly use for packet analysis? Packet analysis involves examining network packets to understand communication patterns, identify anomalies, and detect malicious activity. Tools such as Wireshark and TCP dump are commonly used to capture and analyze packets. How could you detect and block C2 communications during an incident? A command and control server is a remote server used by attackers to send commands to compromised systems and exfiltrate stolen data. Think of this like the bad guy mothership. Techniques for identifying and blocking C2 communications include network traffic analysis, intrusion detection and prevention systems, and endpoint security controls. How is event log analysis conducted to detect and respond to security incidents? Event log analysis involves establishing baseline behavior, identifying anomalies, and prioritizing alerts based on severity. Event log analysis is a crucial capability of an incident responder. And if you'd like to learn more, Let's Defend even has a learning path on it. Check out their event log analysis course. Here you can see the learning path. Go give it a look. All right, guys, before we wrap things up, we're going to dive a little bit further into the weeds with a couple of digital forensics and incident response questions, or DFIR. All right, so our first DFIR question is, what is the importance of establishing a timeline during a digital forensics investigation? A good timeline being created during a digital forensics investigation is crucial for incident responders to understand what's going on. It helps them reconstruct the sequence of events leading up to the incident. By correlating timestamps from different sources, such as system logs, network traffic, and user activity, the timeline provides insight into the attacker's actions, a timeline of the incident, and affected systems. This information is invaluable for understanding the scope of the incident, identifying potential evidence, and formulating an effective response strategy. Question number two in our DFIR section. How do you acquire a forensics image of an affected device? Discuss the best practices and tools used to preserve the integrity of the evidence. Acquiring a forensics image of an affected digital device is crucial for both a forensics investigation and incident response. Best practices include using write blocker software or hardware to prevent alterations to the original data, and thus the integrity of the evidence. Tools such as NCASE, FTK Imager, and DD for Linux are all commonly used for imaging. During incident response, rapid acquisition of the forensics image allows for the preservation of volatile evidence. All right, last but certainly not least in our list of incident response interview questions that you might run into during an incident response interview, explain the role of volatile data collection as it pertains to digital forensics. What types of volatile data are typically collected from live systems? And how is that data used during the investigation? Volatile data collection involves capturing live system information such as running processes, network connections, open files, and system memory. In incident response, volatile data collection provides real-time insight into ongoing attacks, malware behavior, and active network connections. Analysis of volatile data helps identify malicious processes, detect unauthorized access, and gather evidence of attacker activity. By collecting volatile data promptly during the incident response, responders can capture critical evidence before it gets lost due to system shutdowns or volatile memory clearing. All right, guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this crash course in acing your incident response interview. All right, guys, now head on over to the Let's Defend platform and start earning some of those badges. I'll see you next time.